So this is lecture uh, optimization two. Uh, so we're going to continue on with our theme of uh, optimization, and, and uh, we're going to start with this question: What is optimization? Uh, I'm sure this question has several answers, but to me, it's really sort of the art of finding the best uh, value. Right, so the art of uh, finding the best value, and in this, let's say not value, say best answer. And in this situation, the best answer uh, turns out to be uh, the largest or the smallest, so the maximum or the minimum. So we're about to start the section where we do optimization uh, word problems. So typically in a calculus class, if somebody says optimization, they're going to immediately think of uh, the problems you're about to do. But before we do these problems, let's talk a little bit uh, about uh, perimeter area and volume. And let's start with uh, perimeter and area. So we have uh, three objects below, a rectangle, a triangle, and a circle. We want to talk about uh, each of these in turn. So here, let's start with the rectangle. And for a rectangle, we can talk about uh, its area, which we'll call A, and its perimeter, which we'll call P. Now area, what it is, it's this stuff in between here, all this surface. And typically, we'll call this the length and this is the width, and so to find the area, hopefully you know, you take the length times the width. And then to find the perimeter, this is also length L, this is also width W, you just take L, W, L, and W and add them all up. So this is 2L plus 2W. And it's easy to remember these ideas, like if you buy a house, you care about the square footage, which is the area of the house. Um, you might care about uh, the perimeter of the yard if you're going to build a fence because the perimeter is exactly what it means in the English language, the perimeter of the yard, the length around uh, the yard. We also have, uh, let's do a, a triangle. And so for a triangle, if you know the base B and the height H, typically what we want to know is the area. So the area of a triangle is given by one-half the base times the height. And this actually comes from the fact that if you complete the triangle here, those are all dotted lines, that the base times the height, well, what is the base times the height? Well, the base times the height is this whole area in blue. And then the area of the triangle, oops, the area of the triangle colored in red. Hopefully you can see that's one half the area in blue. So you take B times H to get the area of the rectangle. And you take half of it to get the area of the triangle. So area of a triangle is one half base times the height. We're not going to talk about the perimeter, but if you want to find the perimeter of a triangle, how would you do that? Hopefully you just say you have to add up the lengths of these three sides. So I have to add up this length uh, plus that length uh, plus that length. And I can figure out the perimeter of the triangle. The last geometric object we want to talk about, uh, in this case with perimeter and area, is the uh, circle. So let's draw a circle here. And usually with the circle, we're given just the radius r. And so the area of a circle is given by pi r squared. And then the perimeter, p, is given by 2 pi r. So that's how we find the area of a circle and the perimeter of a circle. All right, let's move on to the second two geometric figures. So a box. So for a box, this is a three-dimensional thing, so I'll do my best at drawing a three-dimensional uh, thing here. So here's my box. We can give it this sort of three-dimensionality by drawing these dashed lines. And for a box, you usually have a length the width back here, and then a height. And so we can talk about the volume of a box. All right, now you can't talk about a volume of a square or, or of a rectangle or of a triangle of a circle because these are two-dimensional uh, geometric figures. But for the three-dimensional view, geometric figure of a, uh, a box, and let's get this out of here. Uh, okay. Uh, for a box, what we can talk about is this is the length times the width times the height. So length times the width times the height. And what I see when I do this calculation, if I take the length times the width, it gives me the area of the bottom of the box. And if you shoot it up, 
through H, that gives you the whole sort of volume of the box, okay? So all that stuff in between. So it's like you take uh, length times width, and it gives you the bottom piece, and shoot it up through H, and that gives you the volume. Sometimes we care about the surface area also. So let me get rid of that drawing there. So for the surface area, we'll call that S. If you think about it, now there's actually how many sides here? You have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So to find the surface area, you have to find the surface area of all six sides. So the idea is I can find the surface area of the front. That's just L times uh, L times H. Let me make that drawing a little bit better. So I can find the area of the front right here. So L times H. And there's two of them because there's a front and a back. So two LH. So that gives me that front and that back side. There's also a right hand side over here. <sighs> Come on. The markers, even on this lecture notebook, I have issues with. All right, so here, there's that side, which is uh, W times H. And there's two of them because there's a right hand side and there's a left hand side over here. And then we got the front, the back, the right, the left, and we still have the top and bottom. And so the top right here would be the length times the width. So then plus two times the length and the width because there's a top and there's a bottom. And then we got all sides. So that's the surface area. Now from time to time, we won't need all these sides. So as an example, if, you, um, if, your, if your box is open, so you have an open top, meaning you have no top, okay, then you only need one of these. Right, so this would be my formula now. Get rid of that two there. And just you know, I just that's a race. That means a race. All right, so you just have one of those. Uh, same thing over here. Sometimes when we're looking for like uh, let's say uh, the perimeter of the rectangle, um, and this is a fence. You know, this side might be my house. Right, so you don't need that anymore. And so now the perimeter formula will change. Instead of having two L plus two W, we no longer need this two, and you get back W. So you need to understand not just the memorize the formulas, but you need to understand the concepts of area, perimeter, and even uh, volume to work with this. And then one last little problem we're going to do here, which is the cylinder. So let me draw a cylinder here, because it kind of brings together what we've, the circle and the, the rectangle, really. So here's my cylinder. And I guess this, I didn't do a very good job at drawing this, this front edge. This is you know, certainly circular, so let's do that. There you go. Okay, so for a cylinder, typically they'll tell us this radius r right here. And they'll also tell us the height of the cylinder. And so to find the volume of a cylinder, it's going to be pi r squared times h. And the way this works is if you do pi r squared, pi r squared is just basically... Uh, let's just do this at this area here, the circle. And if you multiply it through h, it's going to shoot you through that height and give you the volume of this thing. Now, let me erase that and do uh, the surface area. So the surface area of this thing is equal to, now there's a top and a bottom. And the area of the top is pi r squared. The area of the bottom is pi r squared. So you can have 2 pi r squared. And notice what that comes from. It's just the area of the top is pi r squared. The area of the bottom is pi r squared. And then you need to figure out what's the area of the cylindrical shell. Right? And that is actually plus uh, 2 pi r h. Now where does that come from? The idea is imagine, imagine that you cut this shell. So let's get this black marker out. So imagine I cut this shell and I open it up and lay it flat. So I open it up and I lay it flat. You're going to see I get what sort of geometric shape, and hopefully you realize it's a rectangle, where this length right here corresponds to this length right there, which is the circumference of the circle. So that's just 2 pi r. And then, of course, this height here is the same as that height there, h. And the area, how do you find area? Length times width. So 2 pi r times h. So that's where the formula for the surface area of a cylinder comes from. All right, so hopefully if you did not know some of those, you know them now because we're going to use uh, all of these at some point, either in today's lecture or the next uh, lecture.
So let's take a look at the first example so you can kind of see. Oh, well, let me say one more other thing here. So before we look at these word problems, the way we're going to solve these word problems is the four steps. Picture equation to solve and test. Um, this is actually a, a famous way to solve any problem in some sense, given by a Hungar Hungarian mathematician, uh, George Polya. So you can, uh, you can Google Pol Polya, and you'll find uh, he actually has a book uh, called How to Solve It, and he's a famous uh, mathematician um, that was known for his problem-solving skills. And so we follow four steps again, picture, equation, solve, and test. And the idea is when you have a problem, the first thing you want to do is draw a picture of that problem to sort of identify what the issues are. Then you want to come up with an equation that models that problem. It's really a formula, or in the real world, it's a plan, uh, how to solve that, uh, that problem. And then you want to implement your plan. You want to solve your uh, equation. So you want to implement your plan. And then if you can, you want to test your answer to see if it's actually correct or not. And now this is a, a problem solving uh, scheme or strategy that works for any problem and we're going to apply it to these optimization problems. And it's easy to remember because P-E-S-T, PEST. And students always like to talk about those PESTy word problems. So picture, equation, solve, and test. So let's do it. Let's take a look at this first example here. So in example one, it says if you have 100 feet of fencing and want to enclose a rectangular area up against a long straight wall, what is the largest area you can enclose? So let's first, let's just draw a picture of this and try to get down all the important information here. So the idea is that there's this uh, long straight wall right here. So here's my wall. And let's switch back to black. So here's my wall and I'm going to kind of put some hash marks on there so it's like that's a wall. And I want to put a fence uh, up against this wall. So I'm going to draw a rectangular fence. So I'll draw some sort of rectangular fence here. That's a terrible rectangle, but you know what I mean. That's supposed to be a rectangle. And what is the largest area you can enclose? So I want to, f and I have 100 feet of fencing. So 100 feet of fencing is that perimeter area stuff. Hopefully you say, oh, that's a perimeter stuff. So the perimeter of fence, at the amount of fence that I have here, is equal to 100 feet. Always write down what you need to find. So find the largest area. So find max area. I always underline it. And now after I get my picture, you should probably label it so you can guess. We're going to call this horizontal side X and the vertical side Y. And of course, and this is also X because it's supposed to be rec the rectangular uh, region. And what we want to come up with now is an equation. So once I have my picture, then I go to my equation, PE, and to find the equation is always what you're trying to optimize. What are you trying to find the maximum or minimum? So we're trying to find the maximum area. So I'm going to write down a formula for the area of this rectangular uh, region. So that A is equal to, and it's just length times width, so X times Y. Now the idea is that you would really like to consider this as a function of x. The area is just a function of x alone. If that's the case, then you could take the derivative, set it equal to 0, and solve for x, because that's what we've been, been doing to find these uh, maximums and minimums. The problem is I can't take the derivative of this thing because I don't have just x, I also have y. So I need to get rid of y some, some way, and that's where this 100 comes in. All right, I know 100 is the perimeter, and the perimeter of this rectangular region is x plus y plus x. Not plus another y, though, because this is the wall. Right, so the perimeter is a perimeter of fence, and so I have x plus y plus x, so I have 2x plus y. And then what I can do now is I can solve this equation for y, so y is equal to 100, then take away 2x. And then I can plug in, right here, I can take this y, right, that y there, and I can plug what it's equal to, right, y is equal to, 100 minus 2x. So the blue stuff is the blue stuff. So I can just replace it. So what I'm going to get here is a equals x times 100 minus 2x, which is equal to, I can multiply through by the x, 100x minus 2x squared. 
So there's a formula for the area that depends only upon x. So as x changes, of course, the area changes. If x is real small, you know, so suppose x is real small right here, then y will be obviously real long, okay? So if x was real small, it might look like this, and y would be real long, whereas if x was real long, I guess we could, you know, go all the way out here. If x was real long, then y might will be real short or something, you know? Right, but somewhere in between, there's going to be a region that I get this maximum uh, volume. And to find it, I'm going to solve this formula. I'm going to take the derivative. I'm going to use this formula and take the derivative. So I'm going to solve. So I'll find a prime, which is equal to 100 minus 4x. And I'll set it equal to 0 because I'm looking for the local max or local min. In this case, I'm hoping for a local max. And so I add 4x to both sides. I divide both sides by 4. So I get x equal to 25 feet. And then I always have to ask myself at this point, is this, is, is this really what they want? Well, they want the maximum, uh, what? The maximum area. So find max area. So I need to find a of 25. That's the area if x is 25 feet. And I can come up here and just plug in. And I have 100 times 25 minus 2 times 25 squared. And I can use my calculator on this and find out that this is equal to 1,250 feet squared. This should be the maximum area. And since there's only one answer, I'm guessing that this is the correct answer. Now I could, to satisfy my curiosity, what I could do here is I could actually test my answer with my calculator. So let's pull out my calculator here. And the way I could test my answer is I could actually graph the formula that I got uh, for the area. So let's clear this out. So what I can do here is hit Y equals and clear that out. And then I can graph this formula right here on my calculator. So I have, uh, what, uh, 100? x minus 2x raised to the 2. So that's the formula for the area. And then I have to make my window. Now my window, I'm going to let go from 0. I'm going to go from 0. And it, the maximum occurred at 25. So I'm going to go all the way up to 50. And I'll zoom fit it. So zoom fit. And <laughs> when I test this thing, I see it goes up and it comes down right, from 0 to 50. And I can even find the maximum. The maximum is right here, but my calculator has a maximum bu button. So if it's second trace and go down to maximum, it'll ask a series of questions. So left bound, you can go to the left. You can also just hit 0 because 0 is definitely to the left. And then you can hit right bound, you can hit 50 because I know 50 is definitely to the right. Hit enter for a guess, and it's going to split out the answer that I found, which is 25 and 1,250. So this is the point, 25 comma 1,250. And so it checks. It definitely is the maximum uh, area. And that's how it works. It's always the same setup, picture, equation, find that formula. A lot of times you're going to have to get rid of y, so use the other piece of information to find y. I right, plug in, take the derivative, set it equals zero, solve for x, and then answer the question they want you uh, to answer. So here we had to find the maximum area, so I found the maximum area. And you can even test it. Now you don't have to test it uh, on the exam if you don't want to, but if you have time, I would come back and test it to make sure you did it right. Let's look at a different formula. So now in example two, and let me throw this off because this messes, messes this application off. Okay, up. okay so uh, on this one, what do we have? Okay, so now <coughs> we have a small closed rectangular box. Right, so it includes a top with a square base and it has a volume of 8 centimeters cubed. Determine the dimensions of this box that will minimize the surface area. So I want to underline all of this. Right? Dimensions minimize surface area. So let's make my picture. So I want to draw a rectangular box with a square base. So let's start with just a rectangular box. 
something like that. And that looks good. And a square base just means the base is the same in either direction. And so there's my attempt, which is quite poor, but you guys see now square base means this is x and this is x. They have the same length. And of course we'll call this then y. And it's closed, so you know you include the top. The volume V, let's say, V is equal to eight centimeters cubed. And we want to find it says the dimension, so let's just write DIM, dim that will minimize, so minimize uh, the surface area. So surface area. Doesn't have to be a complete sentence. So find dimensions, min, the surface area. I just write this down to help me remember what I need to find. Okay, so now for the equation. Now this is the important part. This is why I wrote down what I'm trying to find. So what are you trying to find? And hopefully you say the dimensions that minimize the surface area. And so what are you trying to optimize? And that's the surface area. So you're going to look for a formula for S. So let's write down sort of big S here. So big S is equal to, and when you do this, you just have to understand that you have to find the surface area of the bottom and the top because it's closed, and that's X times X. So you have X squared for the bottom and X squared for the top, so you have two X squared. And then you have plus, so then we have plus, and then you have, well, how many sides do you have? It looks like you have four sides, and each side is x times y. x times y is this side, then you have a back side, x times y, this side's x times y, and the front side is x times y. So how many sides do you have there? Four. Now the idea is that the surface area is a function. You'd like it to be a function of x alone. Then you can take the derivative and set it equal to zero and find the possible uh, local mins and maxes. But you can't do that right now because you have y here. So we need to get rid of y, so that's where the volume comes in. So 8 centimeters cubed is the volume, and the volume is found by taking the length times the width times the height, which is x times x times x squared times y. So x times x is x squared and times y. And then from this, I can solve for y. So to move over the x squared, I divide both sides. So I get y equals 8 divided by x squared. And then I can come back over here and plug in. So s is equal to 2x squared plus 4x times my y. Now y was 8 over x squared, so times 8 over x squared. And I'm going to get some cancellation here. So what's going to happen uh, is I'm going to get this to be uh, equal to 2x squared plus I'm going to get one of these x's. Let's use a different color. I'm going to get one of these x's here to cancel with one of those there. So I'm going to have 4 times 8, which is 32 on top, and an x on the bottom. And so my s is going to equal 2x squared. And then plus, since I'm going to take the derivative, I'll write this as 32 times x to the minus 1. Unless you already know how to take the derivative of 32 over x, which you probably will by the time you finish this. So the next part, I want to solve. So let's go back to black here. So to solve here, the idea is take the derivative of s. So I have s prime, which equals the 2 comes down, I get 4x. Now negative 1 comes down, I get minus 32 over x to the minus 2. And then make sure you rewrite this uh, in this form up here, because otherwise you're probably going to get stuck, because you're not going to know how to solve this equation when you set it equal to 0. So make sure you write it in this form like that. And now set it equal to 0, so 4x minus 32 over x squared equal to 0. And so this tells me, this implies that 4x is equal to, so add 32 over x squared to both sides. Then this implies we can multiply both sides by x squared and divide both sides by 4. So you get x cubed on the left and 8 on the right. So take the cube root, so you get x equal to 2. And this is in centimeters, so two centimeters. But is that the answer? And you have to go back up. And let's just zoom out. So is that the answer they wanted? And hopefully you come up here and it says find the dimensions. And so you found x equal to 2. So you still need to find y. And so to find y, y is equal to, and you can come over here and say, oh, yeah, there's y right there. y is equal to 8 
divided by, if x is 2, that's 2 squared, which equals 4 centimeters. So this dimensions are 2 centimeters by 2 centimeters by 4 centimeters. And that's my answer. All right, so is it the right answer? Well, you can test this for sure. So let's extend the page a little bit. And so we can test this with our calculator. So down here, let me put T for test. And let me pull out this calculator again. And so to test it with a calculator, what you want to do is you want to graph that surface area. So go back to Y equals. And let's clear out this. And so here's the formula for surface area right here. And so I'm going to plug that in. So I have 2 x raised to the 2 plus 32 divided by x. And then I'll make my window. And my window, I'm going to let go from 0. And it goes 2 centimeters. So why don't we go to 10 centimeters and see how that looks. And then I'll go to zoom, zoom fit. And if it's the minimum, it should go down and come back up. And it does. So I got this graph. I went from 0 to 10 centimeters, and it went up, it went down, and then up. And so the minimum's down here, which I can find then with my calculator by just hitting second trace, going down to number 3, which is minimum. Uh, lower bound, I can plug in, um, what, 0. And upper bound, right or right bound, I can, uh, so I should say lower bound. So left bound is 0, right bound, I can put 10. And I come out with my answer uh, of our guess. So hit enter for a guess. And I come out with 2. So the input is 2. Now notice this says y is 24. Now these, this y and my y are two different things. This y is the output, which actually stands for what? What is the output in this problem? Hopefully you're thinking surface area. So that y is the, actually the minimum surface area, which they did not ask us for, so I did not give. Uh, they just wanted the dimensions that would find the minimum surface area. If they asked for the actual minimum surface area, then I'd say 24 uh, centimeters squared is the minimum surface area. All right, let's get rid of that and look at the next problem. Real quickly here, there was one mistake. Uh, on here, I did 8 divided by 2 squared. I wrote 4 centimeters. Of course, that should be 2 ce centimeters because 8 divided by 4 is 2. So this should be 2 by 2, and then y here should be 2 centimeters. So we keep going. Each one gets a little bit harder as we go along. So example three, what do we have? It says uh, find the coordinates of the point, and that says one, that should say on. Uh, the parabola, y equals square root of x, which is closest to the point three, zero. Okay, so uh, understand that y equals square root of x is actually a parabola even though you probably don't think about it as being a parabola, parabola, but it is just a part of a parabola. So let's graph this. And so right here, this is the upper part of the parabola, y equals x squared, but we're using y equal to the square root of x. And then uh, 3 comma 0, where is that at? Well, it's up here. So here's the point 3 comma 0. And we're trying to figure out <coughs> the closest point on uh, this curve to that point. All right, so the idea is actually really simple. Just pick any old point here, and we can call this point x comma y. And you can calculate this distance d by using the distance formula. Right, so what do we want to find? We want to find the point uh, closest. 2, 3, comma, 0 on y equals square root of x. Or we can write, find a point that minimizes the distance, d. So for my equation now, i got to write down what d would equal. <coughs> so hopefully you remember, how do you find the distance between two points? And so d would equal the square root. And you take the difference in the x value, so you take x minus 3 and square it, plus the diff difference between the y value, so y minus 0, and square it. 
This is the distance formula. Remember, this comes from the uh, the triangle. There's really a tri right triangle right here if you want to think about it. And it's this distance squared, which is x minus three quantity squared. I guess the right triangle is right here. All right, so there's the right triangle. X minus three uh, quantity squared. Oh, and I drew this in the wrong spot. Oh crap. Okay. So we're gonna erase. And so hopefully you brought your erasers with you. Says I gotta erase all this. So let's just start over. And hopefully you see what I mistake I made, and we can fix it here together. So in the picture, let's redraw the picture. A little bit faster this time. Still the right thing here. Y equals square root of x. But the problem is, when I made the point, the point three comma zero is right here. All right, so this is the point three comma zero. All right, so no big deal. I still do the same thing. I still have a point on the curve. Uh, so any point you want, just a generic point. So x comma y. The idea is I can calculate this distance d, and I want to minimize it. So find a point minimizes d. There. All right. So let's go find this equation. So for my equation, what do I have? I have d equals, again, it's the square root and the difference between the x values. So let's just take uh, x minus 3 quantity squared plus the difference in the y value, so y minus 0 quantity squared. And I can simplify this equation just a little bit. So d is going to equal the square root of x minus 3 quantity squared plus a y squared. And the idea is that I would, I would really like for the distance d to be a formula in x alone. Then I could take the derivative, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. And that would give me any possible maxes uh, or mins. But the problem is I have y here. But hopefully you see this formula for y, y is equal to the square root of x. So y squared is actually equal to what? It's just equal to x. And so down here what I can do is I take this to be the square root and let's square this out so I get x squared minus 6x and then plus a 9 and then plus y squared which is just plus x. And so d is equal to Let's write it so we can take the derivative. We have x squared minus 5x, because this x will cancel with one of those x's, and then plus 9. And this is all raised to the 1 half. And that's a 9, not a g. All right, so the 1 half. OK. So I'm on my way, so now I want to solve. I want to take the derivative. Now this is a function of x. So you take the derivative of this, d prime is going to equal to 1 half. It's going to come down. I have x squared minus 5x plus 9. Now to the negative 1 half. And then don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x minus 5. And so this is really equal to 2x minus 5 divided by 2 times the square root of x squared minus 5x plus 9. And so we're going to set this thing equal to uh, 0. So let's set it equal to 0. And solve for x. So I'll multiply both sides by this bottom piece. If you don't mind, so I don't have to write it all out. So multiply by the bottom, then the bottom will cancel on the left-hand side. So this is going to imply that we get 2x minus 5 equal to 0. And so we'll solve this for x, so add 5 to both sides. And so this is going to imply that x is equal to 5 halves. All right, now is this the answer? Let's go back up. and Actually, let's just zoom out. So what they want us to find is the point that minimizes d. And so I found x, but I need to find y still. So y is going to be equal to, and hopefully if you look, you'll find a formula for y. y is equal to the square root of x, so it's equal to the square root of 5 over 2. And normally, you know, this is root 5 over root 2. Normally what we do with stuff like this is we rationalize the denominator. So root 2, root 
root 2, which is equal to the square root of 10 divided by 2. So I have x, I have y. I can write down the actual point now if you want as 5 halves, comma, root 10 over 2. Now to check our work, what can we do? Let's extend the page a little bit. And so to test this, so on the exam, if I had time, I'd come back and I'd take out my calculator and I'd uh, graph that formula I found for the distance function. So over here at y equals, let me clear that out, I would just plug in this uh, uh, second uh, square root of, of what? I want to graph this thing right here. And so I have x raised to the 2 minus 5x plus 9 in parentheses, right, just the square root of all that. I'll make my window now. I found it happened at 5 halves. And so I'm going to go from uh, 0 to, oh gosh, let's go to 5, right? That's 5 halves is uh, 2.5, right? So let's go to 5. Let's zoom fit it, see what we get. It should go, go down and come back up because it's a minimum distance, and it does. Good. So I went from 0 to 5. It came, let's see what it, it came down here and went back up. To find the minimum, I can hit second trace, go down to number 3, which is minimum. Left bound, I could put 0. Right bound, I could put 5. For a guess, hit enter. And out pops the answer, 5 halves. And I'm guessing, all right, so I can write this down here. Uh, so this is 1.66 about. So this is 5 halves, which is 2.5. And then what was it? 1.6. 1.658 blah blah blah, which I would guess is the same thing as root 10, so second square root of 10 divided by 2. All right, and there's oh, haha. -ha. Now, what happened there? So I'm looking at it, so this is good. So I'm looking at this, I'm saying, oh, there's a problem. You know, I, I would I would think that this number should match up with this number, and it doesn't. Why does it not match up? Well, think about it. All right, let's do this again. So second trace. Oh, it's already there. So this number here is, was supposed to match up with that number there, and it didn't. It's because this y and this y are not the same y. All right, so. This is really important, you know, students and teachers uh, miss this at times. And so I was trying to confused because I was looking at this. I was like, okay, well, I thought these things should match up because, you know, my brain was going fast and was saying they're both Y. But this obviously, this is the not the output. This is not D, whereas, you know, this Y here, right here, that's D. Right? That's the actual minimum distance. So if they asked for the minimum distance, I would give you this number here, okay? All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So here's my answer, 5 halves, comma, root 10 over 2. Look good? All right, one more, t one more to go. So let's look at this uh, last one. And let me close this out, and we'll be done. So uh, the last one, example 4, we have a poster. Let's zoom in. So a poster is ha have an area of, let me underline this, Area of 216 inches squared, one inch margins at the bottom and sides, and two inch margins at the top. What dimensions will give the largest printed area? All right, so I'm going to go slow through this one so I can avoid making as many mistakes as possible, hopefully. So here's my picture. I have a poster. So let's draw a big poster. And it's supposed to be rectangular, of course. So here's my poster. And on a poster, if you notice, there is an inside and a, and a sort of a margin. And so here are my margins. And what happens is uh, on this one, on the bottom and top, you have one inch. So this is one inch. And this is one inch. And this margin here is one inch. But on the top here, this is actually two inches. Right, so these are the margins. So one here for here is one inch, one inch, two inch. 
and the bottom is also one inch. And then the poster is to have a total area. So the total area is equal to 216 inches squared. And you want to find the dimensions of the poster that give the largest printed area. So max printed area. Right, so understand there's two different areas we're talking about here. We're talking about the whole area, which is this whole area, this whole thing, which is 216, and then what they want you to find, which is the printed, the maximum printed area, which would be inside here. So let's come up with an equation. So to find the equation, we have to ask ourselves the same old question. What are we trying to maximize? We're trying to maximize the printed area. So hopefully this won't confuse you. We'll call the printed area just A. Right, so A stands for this area right here. And it's going to be equal to, well, let's label the outside X and then this side Y. And so to find the area of the blue, and let's just use the blue marker so we can kind of you can see how this works. So we want to find the length of this side. So hopefully you see that this side is actually X minus well, you take off one inch here and one inch there, so that's actually x minus 2. And then this side right there is y minus, and you take off one inch down here and two inches up there, so y minus 3. So the area of, well, the printed area in blue there is equal to x minus 2 times y minus 3. And now what we'd like to do is we'd like to take the derivative of this, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. But the problem is you have y here, and so that's where this number is going to come into play. And so I know 216, this is the area of the whole thing. So just so you know, this is the area of the whole thing. Right, that's what this 216 actually represents. And so that's equal to just x times y. And so I can solve that for y. y is equal to uh, 216 divided by x. And I'm going to plug that in for y then. So my area A is going to equal x minus 2 all times 216 minus x, because that's y. So divided by x minus 3. It's probably the simplest thing to do is multiply this out then. So x times 216 over x, the x's cancel. Right, so I'll do x times this, x times that. So then I get minus 3x minus 2 times this, so this is going to be a minus, and then 2 times 216 is 432 divided by x, and then minus 2 times minus 3 is plus uh, 6. And so a is equal to, I have 216 plus 6, which is 222 minus uh, 3x, and then minus 432 x to the negative 1. So I'm preparing this to take the derivative. So now I can solve. And when I solve this, I'm going to take the derivative of the printed area. So a prime is equal to. So that's 0, and then minus 3. Then the negative 1 comes down. I get positive 432 x to the minus 2. And I'll rewrite that as minus 3 plus 432 divided by x squared. So now set this equal to 0, so negative 3 plus 432 divided by x squared equal to 0. This implies that 3, you can add 3 to both sides, so 3 is going to be equal to 432 over x squared. Multiply both sides by x squared, so 3x squared equals 432. Divide both sides by 3 now. And you're going to get x squared equal to, and check it on your calculator, but 432 divided by 3 should be 144. Let me check it here just to make sure. All right, so 432 divided by 3, yep, 144, which implies x is equal to the square root, plus or minus the square root of 144, we only care about the positive part. The negative is just an additional 
uh, solution that doesn't make any sense to the, the supplied uh, problem. So I get x equal to 12, and this is in inches. And then I have to come back up here and see, did I solve my actual problem? Now they want me to find the dimensions that give the max printed area. So I found the x, but I still need to find the y. And let's just zoom out here. And so if you look, you'll find a formula right here for the y. And so y is equal to 216 divided by x to 216 divided by 12. And if you put that into your calculator, that'll be 18 inches. So my final answer is 12 inches by 18 inches. That should lead uh, to the poster with the maximum printed area. And I can test this. So again, take out your calculator, hit y equals, and we can graph this thing. So I'm going to graph the formula. I'm just going to graph this thing right here. So I have x minus 2 in parentheses, and then left parentheses, I have 216 divided by x minus 3. And I'll make my window, and my window, I'm going to go from 0, and I found x to be 12 where the maximum occurs. So let's go to 24 and see what that does. Then zoom fit it. And because it's the maximum, it should go up, and then hopefully it goes down. Now it started going down a little bit, but not nearly enough. So let's go to 100. I really want it to see it. I want to really see it go down. There it goes. So now this one, I went from 0 to 100. And it starts down here, and it goes up, it comes down. All right, something like that. And to find the maximum, with my calculator, I can hit second trace, and maximum, now go down to 4 for maximum, left bound, 0, right bound, where did I go, 100? Yeah, 100. And I hit enter for a guess, and it should pop right here to 12. And now that Y, remember, don't make this mistake I made last time, that Y and this Y are not the same. This is actually the what? So think about it in a minute. What does this y represent? And hopefully you said it's the actually the, the maximum printed area. All right, this y is the uh, height, if you want, or width of my rectangle right here. Now if they asked for the maximum printed area, I'd give you 150 inches squared. But they didn't. They just asked for the dimensions, so 12 by 18 inches. And that completes this lecture. Just a minute. All right, so real fast. So there's one thing I wanted to point out here to you guys. Let me get rid of this. I want you to realize that every problem looks exactly the what? Hopefully you say exactly the same. All right, every single uh, problem on here. Um, let me zoom in a little bit more. So if you look at this, you're going to see that every single problem looks exactly the same. So let me scroll through them one more time just so you can see them real fast. So here's the first one. So look at it, look at the second one, exactly the same really, the third one, basically the same, the next one, exactly the same. Okay, so try to do these problems when you do them uh, tomorrow in class, exactly the same way each time. And you won't know how to solve it in the beginning, but as you go through this process, it'll, it'll slowly sort of solve itself. Now the lecture's done.